peace peace family so i'm back with another one today what i want to do is i want to talk to my chosen ones about how the enemy's pride will always lead to their downfall or at least a key ingredient to their downfall i ain't gonna say just that's the reason that is a key ingredient to a reason why they seem to be stuck in the same places and spaces all the time you know whether it's somebody you knew since you was little or somebody you just recently met at your workspace or just moving around throughout life their pride is always a key ingredient to their downfall to them staying stagnant i could say that about a lot of us right to a degree but the only reason why i don't put all of us in that pot because for us over here on this side of the tracks we never had that much of a problem apologizing when we was wrong you know we didn't never had that huge of a problem feeling shame or guilt and then having to sit in it after we made a mistake and it was our fault you know it never felt good i'm not saying it like oh it felt the best we could just manage it and take it what i'm saying is we didn't push it off blame other people give excuses get angry at people for shit that we did you know <clears throat> when you deal with a lot of these people out here that's playing by that other playbook they can do things that are extremely detrimental to your life, the people around you's life, their life. And it could be shown on display privately or publicly. And they will still not apologize for it. Their pride is connected to their ego on the unhealthy side of the spectrum. When your pride is stopping you from seeing life when your pride is stopping you from moving more righteously shit even with me saying that you see what's what the system uses the word pride for right they use pride for rainbow university i don't subscribe to rainbow university you know what i mean i like the rainbows outside in the sky i like my chakra rainbow colors but as far as the way they attach pride to that rainbow it makes sense over there. I ain't even gonna lie. Because them beings are too prideful to see the bigger picture. That you are here for a purpose, not to be some weird, you know, fence grass creature. You know, like, we have to be grounded in reality. It's okay to be in La La Land to a certain degree. You know, when you exploring the future and you trying to figure out what kind of space you want to create or what kind of realm you want to go to. That's different. You've never been in those spaces, so now you're time traveling in here in here to those spaces and because you've never been there in real lifetime and you don't know too many other people that has <clears throat> it feels like a la la land until you manifest it i didn't know in 2013 2014 2015 2016 that <clears throat> i would be up front in the digital world like this you know and even before i got pushed to the front of the digital world i had to fight through a lot of <clears throat> fears and obstacles myself in the inside before I was able to even get up here and stand comfortably you know one thing about us and pride right it doesn't exist in our life <laughs> y'all thought I was about to get something drawn out it doesn't exist in our life because we face our trials and tribulations as they come along why you think we don't have to wait a year, two years to, you know, reap karma or, or these bad energies or if we did something that was out of line or out of character? Why you think we don't have to wait a long time before we get slapped back? The creator is not waiting. The crea It's not too many solid beings out here fighting. So the universe, the creator, the greater good needs all the beings that's fighting for them to be on point 24-7. If I went out here and I bumped the car right now because I felt like it, before this day is out, I'm going to get bumped spiritually and it's going to cause an effect in this physical world. That's just how it happens. There is no waiting and lingering and then, you know, you hungry in the a.m. but you don't get your food till later at night. It's like, nah. Anything that has to do with that shame, pride, you know, just anything connected to that vibration because we can come up with a lot of word spells for it. It is, it doesn't hold the same weight over here with us. We live based off of truth. Not my truth, not your truth. We live off the truth, you know? It's, it's the truth. The truth is that 
we got white snow down here. If your coloring is off, you can call it something else. You know what I'm saying? The truth is there's a fence that they just put up right here. It's probably been here, but you know what I mean. It's not one of the, the fancy ones, but you can still tell. That's the truth. Now, if you want to call it something else, say, oh, no, that's not a fence. That's a parameter. <clears throat> Nigga, that's on you. Because <laughs> you do got people who are extremely prideful like that and they don't want to be wrong. I had one person recently in my life who had a... They just was very, very disrespectful. And when you call them out on their disrespect, they always tend to get more aggressive. When I do these things with beings in my life and I notice how aggressive they get, if you a man, oh, best believe my chest is coming out. You know what I'm saying? You know, we gonna see who masculine energy is the strongest. That's just that. But when it comes to the females, ugh, man, I have to work different tactics. So for me, because it's not the same approach with, you know, I would never approach my mini, my daughter the same way I approach a male that's my age, you know, or a male that's 18 years old or a male that's a teenager. I don't give a damn if you're a teenager and underage. If you are carrying it like a grown ass man, I'm going to give you this grown ass man response. Simple process. I'll deal with the consequences afterwards. But men, we got a different <clears throat> reality that we have to face out here every day. You know what I mean? But dealing with the women, because there isn't the immediate oppose or the immediate dangers of physical harm and threat, at least with me. You know what I mean? I cannot speak for the other men who are just so weak that they got to put their hands on females. To me, it's like, I, I, I just never saw any gratification fruits or anything come from doing that, you know? So, ah, hitting women is like me being gay. You know what I mean? Like, ah, those are just some things that I won't do. It's just certain things that I will not do. Simple process. I don't I don't care what people put in line, want to put down. I just won't. But you got a lot of people who tend to get aggressive when you call them out on their shit. And what they do is their pride is so strong and they're so embarrassed that you just literally... They was laying in the bed sleeping and you just took the blanket off of them. <clears throat> they start screaming and yelling and doing all this weird shit because they knew they wasn't supposed to still be sleeping. But they figured if they stay real quiet, real quiet and real still that you would just keep it moving. You wouldn't, you would just let them sleep. No, you're not going to be able to just be disrespectful to us and then do certain things. When you deal with the opposite sex, <clears throat> this is where a lot of the friction is at right now in today's society. Because men, we still approach men the same way. It's always going to be same. Women have always been the same with women. Uh, you meet women, they be like, oh, yeah, I don't like other women. Oh, women, I don't get along with other women. Ah, you don't get along with yourself, you know? I could say that if I said that I don't get along with every man. But I, I, it's, I'm not in a world where I don't get along with every man. I could get along with anybody that I wanted to. Now, what happens is I have certain <clears throat> boundaries. I got respect in place i have certain values and thing in place now that determines on how much of my vibration you're gonna get and receive <clears throat> but back to my recent situation i had called somebody out on some shit that they was doing you know what i'm saying like when you're doing things like you want to ignore phone calls and not call back i don't like when i call you and you text me when you text me when i call you and you're not busy, I don't give a damn. A lot of people make excuses they don't be busy. It fires me up in the inside. And I only say that because I'm left with two options. I have to s stop talking to you or I have to respond and let you know that that shit is not okay. I don't go with none of that. None of that is one of them things that you're just going to get by with and think that it's going to be okay and I'm going to keep talking to you. Because you're showing me that you don't respect me as a being or my time. You don't value me, you know? 
I grew up in a generation where we didn't have cell phones. There was no texting. You know, you had a house phone, you had to call somebody. When you out the house, you didn't even have a house phone. You had to have some change in your pocket. 25 cent, 35 cent, 45 cent to use a pay phone. You know, and then you st it, it still was other things in place. You valued things more when you had to wait a little bit on it. But now everything is such instant gratification. It's like, nah, 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 nah. Mm-mm. You're not going to show me you don't value me or my time when I don't have to give it to you. So really, I never get mad or frustrated with the being. I get frustrated with myself because in all actuality, I feel like a handful of us are too intelligent for this dumbass society we're in. A lot of us that's following our playbook over here with the creator, we are too intelligent for this Western society. So every other minute, every other second, you're going to find yourself dumbing yourself down. You know, when they did that thing, I already expected it because I already knew something within their character would do that. And then plus when people don't associate with God or the creator, I automatically have to put them in a category. So if I put you in this category over here, which and then when I start talking to you, you start talking about the creator and life, love, nature, all these things and I'm going to slide you right on over like a pendulum. I'm going to push you right over here because I had to stick you somewhere to identify. It's like if I meet a man, I'm going to assume he's a man. You know what I mean? But if he tell me, oh, yeah, I went through this surgery and I got all this shit done, I'm like, okay, I'm going to slide you over on the pendulum that way. But I have to put you somewhere. I'm realistic in this realm. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, you don't, you don't want lay people. You don't want to put people in a box. Shut the fuck up. They put you in a box. Don't tell me about, talk to me about putting nobody in no box. You don't see people putting the creator with the demons. They separate it. You don't see people putting good in with the bad. They separate it. That's like oil and water. If you ever put oil and water together, it's always going to separate. I don't care how much you mix it up or look at the flick of the wrist. It's not going to blend itself properly. It's not going to. And the more we can get to a space to where it's like, your truth is where your power is going. Like, not your truth, the truth. I'm just saying, when we say our truth, we know we rhyme with the creator. <clears throat> that's what that's what I mean by that. I'm not a fan of that your truth, my truth, uh, garbage shit. You know what I mean? It's more witch spells that they working out here. But their pride always breaks them every single time. I had my co-host that I mentioned before, he ran away because his pride got the best of him. You know, he kept saying things that he would do, but then every time I would manifest it, he wasn't doing it. He like, oh yeah, if we do this, I would be able to do that. Okay, well, if you get the Zoom piece and you know we can meet people outside of our area, I'll be able to get more guests. Every time I came up with a solution for what he said he needed a little piece for, he never showed up. He never showed up. So for me, it made sense when he just randomly just blocked me and disappeared and stopped talking to me. Then I seen him like a year or two later in life, you know, and he wanted to try to speak. I kept it moving. I didn't say one word to him. I didn't even give the nigga a head nod nah, because you dead to me after doing some shit like that, bro. In all actuality, you a man, so I could have slapped the dog shit out of you, but I chose not to, you know, because it wasn't that serious to me. I opened up my space for a platform for you. And you chose to be a demon. I told you, I'm not going to be responsible and have you sitting up here beside me and you ain't vibing like me, nigga. No. Because I'm responsible. When people see you, they looking at me. Mm -mm. That's just like in real life, too. You know, and it's like with these other demons that we got to deal with every day on a day to day basis. You know, their pride is always going to get the best of them. It's going to make them come up with excuses, reasons avoid solutions you know avoid problems they're gonna create more chaos just because that's the realm that they live in you know it's always a mixture of things that and then it hold on let this plane pass Then it puts them in a space of always feeling guilty with you, you know? 
when you are riding around, walking around, sitting around feeling guilty, when you are in that guilt phase, you know, it's kind of like you've been sentenced. Before you say anything to them, it's kind of like they did it and they're not sure if you're either aware of it or if you're going to say anything about it. But it's kind of like they out on bond. When they do weird shit, they out on bond. When you address it and you see how their response goes, <clears throat> that's going to make it confusing. When you address it, normally that is what guilts them. That's the verdict. That's when the judge slaps the guy and say, guilty, because they feel it. We got that system from our system within. Why do you think we use the same terminology, guilty and feeling guilt? It's the same thing, you know? So then they have to ride out that sentence themselves. And depending on the, you know, the infraction depends on how long they're going to have to ride that guilt out. And it, that just adds to more weird, witchy stuff that they got going on on the inside. Most of them are never in a peaceful space. That's why they get snappy when they get called out. It's like, if I did something that's offsetting to somebody, call me out so I know not to do it next time. That's how we process over here. But if I do it a second and a third time, that means I don't give a fuck. I don't care. It's that simple. You know, it's not that complicated. So just be mindful when you're dealing with a lot of these beings out here who are extremely prideful. Don't try to battle with them if you call them out on it. Once you call them out, that's like when the judge say guilty, smack. Once you call them out and they start rambling and doing that yelling and screaming or that manipulation with their words. Because some of them are very good with their words and they don't even have to yell or scream. They can just use like five words and it'll just put you in this weird space. It's like, damn, yo, they barely even said anything. And now I'm feeling guilty. Like I shouldn't have called them out. It's like, nah, that's what comes with this truth. That's what comes with walking a more righteous life. That's what comes with being in this light, you know? Unfortunately, right now, you have to have your warrior spirit up front. You got to be able to maintain your peace. You got to understand that when we in these phones, in this digital world, it's a lot of manipulation and, and witchcraft being taught to us. And then we're using it and passing it on as if, like, it's normal and it's natural. It's normal, but it's not natural. <laughs> you know what I mean? So just be mindful of all the witchery that's going on out here, you know? And men don't get too lost in the sauce out here. We're in the Western society, you know? So most women are empowered by the system. They're gonna, I don't need no man. I don't need a man. You don't need no man, get the fuck away from them. Simple process, you know? I'm a straight male, I need women. I can live and function but I, I need women. That's just my process. I'm not gonna make it seem like, oh yeah, because the police is here, because I can work a job, because I could do this, I don't need that. I'm gonna let my pride get the best of me. You know, it's like, come on now. Like eventually, you're gonna have to bring yourself to a more realistic standard. You know what I mean? Like if you're a fat ass and you ain't doing shit, like stop walking around like you the hottest thing working. You know what I'm saying? Like men, you, there's a lot of fucking weird ass men out here. I see it's a lot of weird men. Oh man. It's easy for me to deal with men. That's why I don't dig in on them too much because they know the vibes. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck if you gangbang nigga or if you just a nigga that's in the office. Like, they know the vibes. I've been in all realms. You know what I mean? So that's why I can say these things comfortably because I can use my fruits. And then I can know that if I, when I put myself back in those places in the future, I know I'm going to be Gucci. I always have been. That's how it works. You know what I'm saying? I've been in a lot of spaces where I shouldn't even be here right now you know what I mean I shouldn't even be here right now like situations to where like just a lot a lot of crazy shit you know what I mean but I would say like my craziest one would have to be like the craziest one would have to be when I almost laid somebody down and if my gun didn't jam at that time, y'all wouldn't even be talking to me right now. Y'all wouldn't even know who I am right now. And the reason the gun jammed is because I beat him with the pistol. You know, I like, 
I don't use weapons for show, you know. And in that situation, that was a turning point in my life for me, you know, because I was out doing shit that I didn't have to do. But once I'm in a situation, I'm all the way in the situation. And the creator had to show me that I was moving and using that strength, that power in the wrong dimensions, you know. So even when I had to go lay it down for that shit for a little while, it's like the judge had told me when I went up there, they was like, this is the first time anybody has ever came to my courtroom and owned up what they did. You know what I'm saying? I would give you under the guidelines if I could, but I have to follow the guidelines. So I wasn't even mad at it. You know what I mean? It was like, nigga, I know what I did. I know what I did. So I'm going to wear this one. I'm going to eat this. I'm going to take it on the chin. I'm about to go in here, lay it down for a couple years, and work on myself and do some other things, you know? I haven't been home since 09. It's been a long time. It's been a lot of growth progression. I helped and healed a lot of people in there. I showed a lot of people a lot of different things in there. People showed me different things in there. But one thing it did do, it showed me that I am a fucking man. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you know, when you just living around all kind of different men, it shows you how you stand amongst men. I don't recommend people going into that space, but it shows you. And I still came out, me, I still came out <laughs> just as pretty as I went in there, if not prettier. You know what I mean? So it, it all depends on your vibration, you know? So, but I ain't want to run it up too long. Tapping anything down below. Peace and love to the kings and queens.